Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Marcus, who is in Fresno, California, and his call sign is Kilo Golf 6, uh, Quebec, um, November Yankee. Okay. And he is in Fresno. He has, by the way, have you ever been to Fresno? I have. Let me show you where Fresno is. Here's California. And here's the Bay Area and that. Okay. Fresno's right there. In Modesto, it's right there at the geographic center of the state. And that's where I was born. And I grew up down here in southern california okay anyway that's where fresno is by the way this is all part of what's called sometimes the central valley and locals don't call it that they call this the sacramento valley and they call this the san joaquin valley okay and Anyway, it's one of the richest, most productive uh, agricultural areas in the United States. And what it is growing most rapidly right now is houses. Okay, the state is just so overpopulated. It's crazy. One of the problems is the weather. It's so nice there. Uh, there is a school of thought that I think has kind of uh, been given some credence that the main reason that uh, California has with population is the January 1st Rose Parade, the New Year's Day Rose Parade every year, because it's broadcast on national television. It's one of the original New Year's Day parades, and the Rose Bowl game is played that afternoon. And uh, I don't know, by some law they passed in Sacramento, Apparently, uh, it's illegal for it to rain on that day, and it is usually absolutely gorgeous. And sunshine and warmth, and nobody's wearing heavy jackets. Uh, the drum majorettes are out there with almost nothing on it. Um, and I know a person who said to his wife on observing the, uh, the, the parade on television, he says, we're moving to California. So... A lot of people have. Uh, the weather down in Southern California, which goes from San Diego up through Los Angeles, up to San Francisco and so on, is uh, what is called a Mediterranean climate. It's the only place in the United States where Australian eucalyptus trees can grow. And I grew up with eucalyptus. They're very fragrant. They're also lousy trees. They dump all kinds of crap all over everywhere and um, they're not very good wood. They were brought into the U.S. To, um, ra for railroad ties, but the wood is too soft for railroad ties. So anyway, I digress. Okay, today's uh, is from Marcus, and he asks, I've gotten back into ham radio. Good, good for you. Was absent for about eight years. And I bought an ICOM 7610, which is a little overwhelming, he says. I agree with that. The 7610 is not a beginner's radio. Um, it's a contesting radio, uh, also good for DX. Uh, it's got a lot of features on it. And the problem with a lot of features is that that means you have to set a lot of features. But one of the nice things about that and many other radios is just like that of cameras. The camera I'm using for this right now is a Panasonic uh, G7, which is a very popular camera for YouTubers. It's a not quite a single lens reflex. It actually has a viewfinder where you're looking through the sensor. Uh, you're actually looking through the sensor, so it's not got a mirror in it. So it's not a single lens reflex. It's a mirrored camera or a uh, sensor type camera, but I love it. It takes wonderful pictures. It's also very good for uh, video. Anyway, it can be set, like any complicated camera, into point-and-shoot mode. And that's kind of what you want to do with these complicated radios when you're first learning them, is just leave everything on the default and uh, so-called, I would call it point-and-shoot mode, 
and then you can use the radio and then learn what the features are. Okay, he uh, has a small backyard. He was thinking of a vertical with no radials. I do have a lot of noise in the area. Any help would be appreciated. Well, he's right about the uh, vertical without radials in the backyard being a quick and easy way to get on the air. And uh, I would suggest that you can make your own vertical, although probably you'll want to buy one. They're not cheap. Um, it, like uh, I would recommend like uh, Cushcraft AV640 or something like that. There is also the, the R7, but um, I think the AV640 is a little more modern in, in its design. However, you don't want to mount those right on the ground. You want to get them up about 10 feet in the air. So go down to a Home Depot or Lowe's and get um, a 10 foot length of chain link fence top rail. It's a steel tube, it's not very expensive. Use that, you know, stick it on or over um, a cinder block or a brick or something like that. Um, use that to get the bottom of the antenna 10 feet in the air. And then you're going to have to guy there down to guys or trees or whatever you use for guying. I like to use my trees out here. Uh, about eight feet above the ground so it's not swaying much in the wind. Um, and then uh, you'll want to guy halfway up the vertical itself down to the same guy points. Uh, use guy rope that will withstand the, the sunshine. It can get very hot in Fresno. It regularly gets above 110 in the summer. And then in the winter you have fog, which means that rope is going to get, you know, you might even get some uh, freezing rain type of thing there. The, the temperatures in the San Joaquin Valley vary hugely, okay, during the year. Um, so let me draw a picture of that. So you've got a pole 10 feet and the AV640. Now the AV640 covers all of 40 and on up to 10 and then maybe plus 6, I'm not sure. I, it covers 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10. Okay. Now, you can get the AV680, which also covers 80, but not 60. Okay. But it only covers about 50 kilohertz of 80. It doesn't cover enough of 80 meters to be useful unless you have one particular net that you want to get along or if you want to tune it for FT8 on 80 meters. Sorry, there's no hyphen there, is there? Okay, so you would put the antenna on top of that uh, these are like 28 feet tall, so that'd be 38. So you want a guy there, and you want a guy there, okay? Now, the amount of footprint taken up by this is quite small, okay? So this is a good choice for somebody who's uh, got a small backyard or something like that. Now, you mention a lot of noise. That's a hard problem. Um, you've got the IC7610. There is a separate input for a receive only antenna. Now you have to set it to receive only. Okay, so you can like uh, transmit on uh, antenna input one and receive on antenna input three, but it's also possible to transmit on antenna input three, in which case you'd fry your receive only antenna. There are lots of people who make these little receive only loops. Um, you've got the W6LVP, I think it is. Um, and you've got MFJ. There are others, Chameleon. 
makes a nice one. They say their new ones are coming out with better preamps. I thought the preamp and the one I had worked pretty well. They said they were going to send me one of the new preamps, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, but they're all nice antennas. And then you could feed that to input three and then set the menu. So that's your receive antenna. Okay. So you can receive on something like a nice quiet loop and then transmit over this. Okay. And you could do that since you've got the radio that will support it. Um, otherwise, you need to do all the usual stuff to hunt for RFI. And yeah, there's more and more of that all the time. Let's take a look at this radio of yours. This is the ICOM 7610. It's a fancy radio. It's also very expensive. Okay, not as expensive as their 7850, but uh, still expensive. You have two separate receivers. So you can receive on one band, transmit on the other. Uh, you could do splits on a single band. It's got direct entry for uh, frequencies or for bands. Okay. Um, these two radios, um, this is, uh, you tune it by choosing the radio and then tuning the tuner. It's not like the expensive ones where you've got two separate knobs. Okay, for the two tuners. Uh, now here you've got main audio frequency and RF and squelch. And you've got for the sub. Sub is the sub receiver, the second uh, receiver. Okay. And you can do splits. Uh, there's a million things underneath. You've got little things that you can punch underneath here can't remember if this is touchscreen or not. I think it might be because the 7300 is touchscreen. It's a very nice radio, but it's very expensive and hard to operate unless you set it in point and shoot mode, which would mean you don't even use the second receiver. Okay, you only use the main over here. You just use this for band switching. It's got uh, band stack registers in there, which are very nice, also confusing. Um, and then you can just pick the one you want. I happen to really like the meter that goes back and forth because I like dancing needles. Um, I've got them on my power supply and the SWR meter, but uh, it's available on the 7300, but I don't, don't use it there. Now, like I said, I used the 7610 courtesy of Brad Rich, N6GR, who lives um, in Alamogordo, New Mexico. And he loaned me this. I kept it for too long, I'm afraid. Um, and we made a special trip over to his place to return it. Um, and uh, it's his favorite radio. He does contesting and Poda and soda and stuff like that. Uh, both the uh, hunter and uh, the hunters and the gatherers. I, I, ooh, there's a special terminology for that. People who are on the mountains and people who are looking for mountains. And the same with parks. There's park activators and those are the people in the parks. So there are lots of things. He's, he's very good at that. I love the radio. It's a beautiful, beautiful radio. But like I said, this is not a beginner's radio. I would recommend that if you are shooting for a very nice HF radio, you go for the reference station. Go to decaster.com slash reference. And it contains a com fairly complete bill of materials for all the things you need to get on HF. So for new generals, uh, people who haven't been on the air in a while, that's a good place to go. The reference station radio is the ICOM 7300. Now a reference station is just that. It is a design of a station that's available for reference. You may wish to depart from it. Using it as a reference, you can replace anything in there. Like for example, the Yesu FT991A is a marvelous radio. Um, I went with the 7300 because I think it's 
uh, more people are using it, so more people will know more about it. Now, whenever I do anything on um, my videos that's like demonstrating something on HF, I'll use the reference station. I put my high-powered Yesu up on the shelf and bought the reference station. I have implemented the reference station. It's what is connected right now. Uh, I can even select the reference station antenna. So there you have it. I hope that's helpful. And uh, I think that uh, because you've got the 7610, you do have the ability to use like a receive loop, which are not very big. They're about three feet in diameter. Uh, use that for your receiver. They are directional though. So there you have it. Now, if you'd like to help this channel stay afloat and doing good, and we are doing good, you can go to decastler.com slash support, find a way that works for you. If you would like to ask a question, please send it to askdave, all one word, at A-R-R-L dot O-R-G. Okay, I may pick from that for the videos. I may pick from that for the column, the Ask Dave column in QST. And sometimes it's just easiest to reply directly. So be sure to subscribe, click like, and until we next meet, 73.